Welcome to Jubilee Christian Church International, Chapel of Victory, Durham, North Carolina. Thank you for listening to this message. For more information about Jubilee, please visit us online at jubileenc.org or call us at 919-484-0707. Be magnified. Lift your hand before the Lord Father. We thank you this day. Our eyes are on you. Lord, you are the lifter up of the heads of your people. Lord, you are the way maker. You are the miracle working God. Father, Lord, this day I lift every family every home that is represented in this service today i declare against every atrocity of the wicked every arrow of wickedness that have been shot against you i lift up your countenance upon your people i make your forehead stronger than their foreheads i declare you are a victor this devil these demons they will not overcome you you will rise out of this situation the Lord shall be magnified in every circumstance of life. Our eyes on you this morning. Lord, open the scriptures to us. Give us insight and revelation. Give us understanding and illumination. Touch us, O God. Heal our bodies. Open doors in the desert for your people. Make rivers where there is none. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we worship. Amen. And the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Come and let's celebrate the Lord. If you have to hand clap unto the Lord, give the Lord a loud clap offering. Are you doing that? If that, someone say, if that hand is not borrowed, if it is your own, come on, clap it, clap it. Let the devil know that you are clapping not for yourself, but for the Lord God Almighty, the maker of all things. Thank you for being in the service this morning. I want to welcome everyone that are joining us online. You are worshiping with us today. We are one family of Christ from Africa, from Europe, from America, and Asia. Wherever you are today, we welcome you to the service. And we say, please take away distraction. Focus now so that we can enjoy our worship. I want to welcome those of you in the house. I celebrate you and I thank God for you being here. Thank you. Hallelujah. This morning, God is going to open doors. Come on, say doors. Our team, the month has been season of opportunity. Opportunity do come in season. Some of us may not know that. There are sometimes you are looking for, you couldn't find it because season of opportunity came and you did not catch it. I pray for someone this morning, you will not miss your own season. There is a season to be lifted. There is a season to be promoted. There is a season when doors are opened. Unfortunately, many people, they miss it. We've been talking about the four things that are necessary in this season of opportunity. The very first one is you need connection. Principle number one, for God opening doors for you, you need to open your eyes. One of the ways God make opportunity to come is through people connection. Somebody you have not regarded for a while. Somebody you have not spoken to for a, a long time. An insignificant person around your life. They might be the package of your opportunity. The second thing we're going to look at today is when you are knocking the door of opportunity. The second important key that you must harm yourself with is what I call recognition. You know, opportunities come to many people, but the challenge is many of us cannot recognize it. Because when opportunity shows up, it's not dressed the way you expect. The most important thing about opportunity is recognizing it. For many of you, opportunity is sitting across the hallway. You bypass it, you go over and over and over, you ain't seen it. Yet it is meant for your life. Come on, this morning you will recognize your opportunity. 
I say, I will not miss mine. I'm praying for myself. I will not miss mine in the name of Jesus. Many of us, we are a few inches, few meters, few kilometers to break in, major breakthrough in your life. You met somebody casually at the airport. You exchange card, but you didn't know that that person carries opportunity. Few feet away from major breakthrough. The challenge is our eyes are closed. We didn't see it. I read through Genesis chapter 21 verse 19. Here we saw Agar, he was, she was thirsty. Her son was dying of thirst. But unknown to her, around her are opportunities. The bottle of water in her hand was finished. And the baby was crying and crying, dying of thirst. If you've ever been into the desert, you can understand what that means. So the lady cast the child somewhere and she was crying. I pray for someone this morning, your cry is over. God is about to open your eyes to something you have not seen until this moment. Here was Agar. She was frustrated. She was lamenting. And then the Bible tells us in verse 19, if you have your Bible there, verse 19, Genesis 21, and God opened her eyes. Come on, somebody say open. And God opened her eyes. I ask my, which eyes are we talking about? Was she blind? Was she closing her eyes? May I say, ladies and gentlemen, you need another pair of eyes to see opportunity. Our ordinary eyes miss a lot of them. See, the Bible says, God opened her eyes. And then she saw a well of water. It was not freshly dug. It has already been there. Many of you, the things that you are lang 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 languishing about, things that you are frustrated about, heaven has provided them. I say this morning, your hand will see you to touch it and your eyes will see it. And the Bible says she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water. There was a bottle of water and there was a well of water. There was abundance, but she couldn't see it. You may be looking and you are not seeing. See, the lady in front of you today might be some future partner for some of us. We saw, but we're not seeing. Many of you, you are angry about the position on the job. And you are frustrated, you want to quit, but you could not see I pray this morning you will see in the name of Jesus. I found out in life certain things are not so hard, they are not so difficult. Especially when you are tuned to God. When you are dancing around the tune of opportunity. Certain things are quite easy. Have you had somebody said, I was there at the right time. I was there at the right moment. Have you had that word before? I was there when something glorious was just happening. You are in the right place, right time, and with the right people. You see, that is called opportunity. I pray God will cut off the struggle and it will open the door for major breakthrough in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. I was reading the, during the week, a small city needed resources for major projects and they called for a meeting. And one gentleman rose to speak as they were discussing. And they shut him down. They asked him to keep quiet. He didn't know what he was talking about. He quietly left them until another person arrived to the meeting. And he was wondering what John Rockefeller came to do in our city. Anybody had the name John Rockefeller? Anybody had Rockefeller family? Oh, you are not. You've not been reading history. You've not been reading <laughs> current affairs. There are other things we should be reading outside Bible. Is that not so? We should be familiar with what's happening in our world. If you Google today, one of the major first millionaire or billionaire in America was John Rockefeller. He came to a small city. Right there, he was looking to bless somebody. He came to a small meeting where he was thinking of dropping some millions of dollars. But that very day, they shut him down. They said, keep quiet man you don't know what you're talking about i pray when somebody who had a blessing for you show up around your corridor you will recognize them and so that city missed a major major help 
a major philanthropist that came to town because they did not recognize him. In Matthew chapter, I believe Mark chapter 6 verse number 5, the Bible tells us about Jesus, Mark chapter 6 verse number 5. He came to town and the scripture tells us that they could not do mighty works in his own city. See, the hardest part, people of God, of using opportunity in life is recognizing it. Often time we realize we have been standing before a great opportunity and then suddenly that door is closed and then we know, wow, what happened here? Jesus came to town, the, uh, the creator of the universe. The Bible says he could dare do no mighty work. Not that he did not want to, he could not. Are you hearing me, people of God? He could not. Why? Because the people did not believe him. He could do no mighty work. Save laid hands upon a few sick folks and he healed them. Why? Because the citizens of Jesus' hometown, they had the first shot to miracles. But they did not recognize their Messiah. They lost a blessed opportunity. Many of us, we take things for granted. We miss in life. We fail to honor people who came to bless us. Some opportunities are wrapped in an ugly, unattractive wrapper. May God open your eyes to see them today. In the name of Jesus. I said this morning, you will not miss your opportunity. The greatest thing that about opportunity is, we may miss it. The story we read this morning talks about a king who went to meet a prophet. And there are some battles that you may not even need to fight by yourself. Because God wants to fight that battle for you. And so the king said, man of God, I mean king, open the window. You we read it, we're not going to read it again. He says, open the window, verse number 17. Open the window, each word, and he opened it. And he said to him, Elisha said to him, shoot. And he shot. Open the window. Some windows are only open for a short while. If you don't shoot, you lose. Some battles do not need your energy. God wants to fight for you. Here this man came and God said, you are going to fight the Syrians. You are going to win against the Syrians because I'm going to help you. And this is how we're going to do it. He went on and said, take the arrows, verse 18. Take the arrows and he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, smite upon the ground and he smote thrice and stayed. He smote thrice. And he stayed. And the man of God was angry. He was wrought with him and said, Thou shouldest, thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Thou shouldest. The greatest word of regret in the life of many people is, I should have. I pray for someone as you lift up your hand, you will not regret in your life. When you look back at your life, the word I should have will not come to your mouth. It is it's called missed opportunity. The man says you should have stricken five or six times. Herefore, God will have given you victory six or five times without much effort. But what is the problem for this man? He didn't know it was an opportunity. That's it, right? The king, I mean, the prophet did not announce ahead of time that I am about to give you an opportunity. He didn't know. His failure was because he could not discern, he could not recognize a moment of opportunity. Somebody is going to walk across to you, shake your hand, but brother, may you recognize that they have something for you. I say, may you recognize that they carry something in their hand for your life. In the name of Jesus. Opportunity abound. But the challenge is, we lack vision. We lack insight. We cannot see. We cannot recognize when they show up around the world. Look at that inscription. It says, opportunity comes our ways daily. And they abound all around us. 
But the hardest part is our failure to recognize them. I gave this story this morning of a salesman in a particular dealership. He was doing his own job, I mean, one, one early morning, and a young man entered. He was wearing a sweater, like a turtleneck, and overall, he dressed dirty. He had a rubber boot on, in his feet, and he went in and said, have you got cars on hand? That was his question. And the salesman answered, sure, we have. And the man said, I want 16 cars, 16 cars right now. And the salesman looked up and down He sized him up. I pray today you will not miss your opportunity. Have you seen people sizing you up when you show up? They look at your wristwatch. They know the value. They look at just, uh, your old dress, $50. They look at you. They size you up. That's how many people miss the epas of their destiny. They are not properly dressed. They don't look well kept. They are not wearing a, a 500 suit. And all of the things around them don't look right right but may you not miss them and so the salesman say boss off get out of my sight don't waste my time and so this man he did exactly that he, he went across the street to the next car dealer a competitor selling different make of cars he made a similar inquiries and he got full service. When people come to our church, let's give them full service because you never know what they carry in their lives. When you look at a young child, don't treat him with disrespect. You may never know the future he carries. Are you hearing me, church? Because the greatest challenge is failure to recognize who is our opportunity. So the man made the inquiry, got full service, and right there, he opened his wallet. He counted $77,000 in cash. And he handed it over to the car dealer. Got 17, 16 cars and drove away. What do you think the other dealer 16 cars and drove away? I was looking at. He was biting his tongue. He was angry with himself. How come I did cast one time. I pray you will not miss your own time and your own season. Opportunity are seasons and opportunity can expire. Are you hearing me people of God? It can expire. When God opened that window and you do not recognize it and you do not seize it it can expire. Why did this happen? Because the man was could not recognize what opportunity looked like. Just like Jacob said one day, Jacob was praying somewhere. He was, he was wrestling with God in prayer overnight. And then the Bible says, Genesis 28 verse 16, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord was here, but I did not know it. Many of us, we are sleeping in life. God is doing some great things around our lives. But because we are asleep, we did not see it. Come and touch yourself and say, God, wake me up. Wake me up. Uh -uh, wake me up to my opportunity. They are sleeping by our fingers because we are fast asleep. A casual discussion with a friend, an email, a quick phone call, a meet and greet with a stranger at the airport. You know, some years ago, I was traveling. Some of you had this story. I was going to Atlanta, one particular program, and there was a gentleman that was sitting beside me. And as the waiter was serving us, the hostess was serving us Coke, this gentleman spilled his Coke on my clothes. It was a mess. And he was so apologetic. He was begging and was sorry. And I just like, said, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And right there, we connected. Jopon Popos, remember that man, Bishop Brody. And he came to our church after that. Just by that introduction, he was a contemporary of T.D. Jakes. And right there, we exchanged. He said, you are a pastor in Durham. I said, yeah, I am. I said, I'm also a pastor in Durham. How we connect? What if I yelled at him? What if I give him a, a, a box? What if I kick him? Many of you, I pray, don't do that at all. Man, what if I kick at him and yell at him? What, what, what? Can't you see, man? See, there are people that God sent to your way. If you don't recognize them, you miss them. Are you hearing me, somebody, this morning? May you not miss your own time. May you not miss your own season. 
Jacob said, God was here. I did not know. I was too much asleep. Many of us, we are facing great opportunities, brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. May I tell you some five hidden places where opportunities are locked. I want you to write this for yourself because that is how you are fishing for them. Where are opportunities I'm looking for? Swan say is in insignificant things. Insignificant things. Like this man of God told the king, shoot arrows. What has that got to do? Shoot arrows. I'm praying for somebody this morning. When God tells you to do something, just do it. If he asks you to jump, come on, jump. He told Naaman, dip yourself seven times inside the water. You remember that story? And, and Naaman was angry. He was complaining. What is the meaning of that? What a waste of my time. See, if I could consult clinic, I could go see the physician, and there are better rivers here and there. Why should I come to River Jordan, a dirty place, and just dip my Am I a kid? Can you imagine what was going on when the, the instruction was go when, when he came to knock Elisha's door you remember that story Elisha did not open the door he did not exchange card he didn't give him an introduction just say tell that man to go to River Jordan and wash and the man was going he was angry God sometimes will test your pride he will test your humility by asking you to do something stupid are you hearing me people of God you will not fail the test of the almighty God Deep yourself. The man was angry. See, if his pride was hot. Don't you know me? I am General Neyman. I am the commanding officer for the army of Syria. Me going to some useless drug. <laughs> and the servant said, Master, if he asks you to do bigger things, why won't you do it? Just follow the instruction. And he got to the river, you remember, and uh, he got there, he, he, he dipped himself. Somebody has to be counting for him. Say, Man of God, one. <laughs> Two. Can you imagine how ridiculous that is? But God was testing his obedience. God was going to use insignificant things to bring him a breakthrough. How are you able to locate opportunity? I say, people of God, they are in insignificant things. They can be in something that looks useless. He could tell you, sow a seed. He could ask you, join JK, serve the Lord. He told somebody, sweep this floor. I've had stories like this. God spoke to one lady sometimes ago that go in and begin to, to wash the bathroom of the church. Come on, keep on just wash the bathroom. That was the instruction. And she was doing that faithfully. But this lady was looking for fruit of the womb. As she was doing that, nobody prayed for her. God by himself opened her womb because she obeyed God in insignificant things. Are you hearing me, people of God? I heard the story of one, man, one lady in the Bahamas. Man, one man of God was sharing the story. This lady was fired on her job. And there was nothing else to do. She has three kids. And she came to, to the man of God. Say, man of God, please, I am helpless. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what to turn to. This is the last paycheck they gave to me. And the man of God said, well, do you have an oven in your house? See, sometimes the Holy Spirit will give uh, an instruction. Please don't forget. Obey. So the woman said, yes, I have an oven in the house. Say, how often do you use it? Say, once a week. Okay, your oven has been useless. Go home. With this check, buy supplies. The kind of cookies you baked for me the other day, why don't you bake it, go back to the hotel and distribute it to everybody, all the, the co-workers in where they fired you. So she did exactly. She baked cookies, small, small ones like that, went back to the hotel, distribute to all our fellow workers and all, everybody got one for free. And then she went back home. Before she knew it, phones began to ring. We love your cookie. We tasted it. Can you give us six dozens? The first week, can you make it 12 dozens? Another week, can you make it 120? Within a year, she bought, a, 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 what do you call it now? The, the, the commercial oven. Are you following me? Within one year, commercial oven. Within two years, she was able to employ close to 20 something workers that were working with her. And in four or no, about three years, she 
actually created a company. She built a factory out of that. She was supplying everyone, every major companies in the Bahamas. And he came, she came by and said, Pastor, I just want to come to bless you. The pastor opened the check and it was $10,000. The lady who could not afford herself and said, Pastor, thank you that you asked me to go home and bake and bake a, a, a cake. Do I call it cake now? Cookies to bake cookies because I did not know insignificant things, little things in my hand. I didn't know it could become such a blessing. Overall, she was employing 150 people. I'm praying for someone this morning. Insignificant thing will bless your life. I said the little rod in your hand. Look at that. God told Moses, what is that thing in your hand? Come on, lift your hand before God. I felt inspired to pray. That little thing in your hand, I pray the heavens will multiply it. Grace will come upon it. Insignificant thing will open doors for you. In the name of Jesus. Where do you find opportunity in average and ordinary people? Like the miracle of Naaman we just talked about, he was locked up in a little maid. Everyone, God places around our lives, they have a purpose. Opportunity can be found in unusual places. In fact, inside the prison, places you never thought. One of the reasons people of Israel did not accept Christ was the fact that he was born in Bethlehem. And they said, where well, Bethlehem of all places, an insignificant place in Israel. When we went to Israel, we were, part of our trip was to visit Bethlehem. And indeed, we saw it. It's, it is smaller than many of your villages where you, you grew up from. Very small place, just like a small, very small town. Less population. But right there, that was where God planted the Messiah. I'm saying sometimes God may intentionally put opportunity for you in unusual places and so today you will not miss it in the name of Jesus. Sometimes opportunity are locked up inside a problem. The door you are struggling to open might actually be God telling you I have opened another door for you. Many of you, you are standing before a closed door. You kept struggling with this door. You were hugging with it. You were hungry with it. But unknown to you, God says, I have opened another door. See, that lady did not know that in baking cookies, she was giving it for free. Many of us, we bake cookies, we just send it to friends, but she didn't know that that is the breaker and the maker of blessing for her life. You will not miss yours. In Jesus' name. Now, I want to talk about some of the reasons why some of us miss opportunity. There are major opportunities we have, read, we have missed in life. Looking back at that scripture, the Bible says the man of God was angry. He was angry with this guy and he cried. What? You miss it. When you look over your shoulder in years to come, I pray you will not cry in regret. In Jesus' name. There are many people today that are wrestling with remorse, wrestling with regret of the closed doors that they missed, the preventable crisis that they could have averted, the woman they could have married. They missed those opportunities. Everything around them came at the right time, but it expired. They were not paying attention. God is saying to the church today, I keep in sending opportunities to you. Your challenges, you do not recognize them. I I kept sending grace and, and dust to you. Some of us, we are seeing those things on our jobs, but we did not recognize them. I'm hearing God saying to me today, if your eyes will open and you will see the things I've already prepared for you, you should be dancing. You should be praising God. This week, God will open your eyes. Oh, everything you need is within your ham shot. It's within your elbow. You can get it. The challenges you are not saying it. Let me give you a few things, major opportunities that comes to us but we don't recognize. Number one, opportunity to save a soul. There are times God will bring people around our lives, people that are crying for help, people that are tired of life, and we have opportunity to tell them about Christ. We shut our mouth. A woman, a woman was fetching water one day in Samaria. Jesus was going about his business. But the Bible says he came closer to the woman. And that woman that day got salvation. Because Jesus 
took advantage of opportunities. A woman, give me water. See, he connected with her from the thing she was doing. There are people around our family, children of God, that they need the message of salvation. It could be somebody on your job. It could be somebody that is a family member. It is time to seize it. Door of salvation may not be perpetually opened. Sometimes people die and they miss salvation. If you have somebody in your family who has a terminal situation, please use the opportunity and preach the gospel to them. God gives us opportunity to win a soul, to save a child. But many times we miss it because we thought they are not ready. Friends, roommates, they arrive for salvation. Colleagues at work on a terminal disease. The Bible says, lift up your eyes and see. Lift up your eyes and behold. There are people who need your help. You remember the story of a man who went to eat in the restaurant and when he finished eating, the Holy Spirit spoke to him, preached to that waiter, talk to him now, talk to him about Christ. He shook, I'm here to eat, not to preach. He, he shook it off. Two, three times the Holy Spirit kept talking to him. He refused. As he went out of the restaurant, the Holy Spirit grabbed him. You disobeyed me. I told you to preach to that person. And he was so sorry. He felt convicted. He said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm, I will go back. He came back. The door was locked. And the owner of the restaurant said, what do you need, sir? He said, I want to talk to the restaurant, uh, to the waiter who waited on me. I want to talk to him. And the, uh, and the owner said, no, sir. You came too late. Because as soon as you left, he went to the bathroom and he shot himself. He was ab nobody knew he was about to kill himself. God knows at that time he needed the message of hope. Are you hearing me, people of God? There are people around our life that are depressed. Some are confused. Some don't know what else to do with their lives. When you sense the urgency in your spirit, please grab the opportunity because there are seasons. Have you see many times when you see mangoes, you see oranges, there are seasons when it's ripe and overripe. If you don't catch it at the right time, it will go to waste. Number one opportunity we are missing in life is opportunity to save a soul. Are you hearing me, church? Number two, opportunity to do good, to give, to bless, to help someone, to make impact in someone's life. Jesus one day was preaching and as he sat down to talk, a woman came right there. She had on her a alabaster box of oil. And the scripture says she spilled it on the body of Christ. And she was anointing, anointing his body and his feet with her hair and, and with the oil. And then they were complaining. Jesus said in Mark chapter 14 verse 8, This woman, she has done what she could. She had done what she could. What happened there? She saw an opportunity to bless the Lord and she did it. And said she has done this ahead of my barrier. You could see that in that scripture. If you fast forward and go to Mark chapter 16 verse number 1. So Jesus died. They buried him. And the third day, on the Sabbath day, the Bible says some women, they gathered together. They got themselves spices. They bought some, themselves an anointing oil. And they wanted to go and, and anoint the Savior. But unfortunately, they met an empty sepulcher. Opportunity to anoint him was gone. Do you have people in your life? You have opportunity to do something when your parent can still eat. Are you able to give them food? Well, we miss those opportunities and they are gone. I tell you, friend, it's a missed opportunity. Sometimes in our lives we need to recognize when God sent people to you that you they need your help. Maybe what they needed was just a five dollars. Five dollars and you could not give it to them. You would not give it to them. Do you know what that means? A five dollars to a man that is trapped in a dangerous location is what much more than five thousand dollars in another another time what god is saying is there are times you have opportunity to bless people but you did not do it you were dilly darling you were complaining you were postponing if abraham had done that you know what he would have missed he would have missed opportunity 
for the blessing to receive Isaac. Anybody remember that? Three men were walking. They were just going on their way. And Abraham saw them afar off. And the scripture says he invited them to come. Scripture says that is how many people have entertained angels unaware. Many times God give us opportunity like that. Somebody knock on your door. Somebody calls you and they are desperately looking for help. Please, if it is in the power of your hand to render it, give it to them if you can. Are you with me, church? Nod your head if you are with me or are you sleeping? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, this morning you will not miss your own opportunity. God may say, and by the time those angels were eating and drinking, one of them suddenly said, Abraham, where is, where is your wife Sarah? And right there, there was a pronouncement. He, 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 he pronounced. By this time next year, can you imagine that he had been entertaining angel? I want to say, people of God, let's open our hands. Let's bless others. Children, bless your parents when you can. Because something will come from their mouth and it will land on your door. It will be a blessing that, wow, you did something good for your parents. Yesterday, my, my son took, our younger son took my wife out. It was just pleasantly surprising. I didn't know, they didn't invite me, they didn't call me to eat. You see, <laughs> you know, well, men, sometimes we, we are not too petty on that. Right. So I just saw them dressed up. I said, where are to wear? Say, where well, I've invited mommy to go for breakfast. Say, what about me? <laughs> say, you missed me, you didn't invite me. I was not properly dressed at that time. I said, well, go bless your mom. When you get there, whatever you can find, just buy and bring home. But see, what impressed me that he, nobody coached him. He took that initiative himself. And then when he came back, brought me salad. I said, well, I guess I'm going to bless you. Right there, I opened my mouth and started blessing him. Children, bless your parents. Because their blessings will flow unhindered. You do not even need to struggle for it. It will just flow by itself. That is what Abraham, Isaac did to So You remember Esau, he was trying to eat his venison and said, well, bring that so I can bless you. There are certain things in life, they are not so difficult to get if you know how to open that window. I'm looking at opportunity here, people of God. In fact, you can create opportunity. Are you hearing me? Opportunity can come on its own, but you too can create an initiative and make opportunity come your way. Amen. You bless a man of God. Don't you think you are creating opportunity? You remember when Elijah, Elisha was traveling all over the place and then one woman said, well, call her husband. What do we do for this man of God going up and down? Why don't we make a room in our house for him? And uh, you know, he can come in here and rest and continue on his journey. You remember that story and the scripture said they did that. What did that woman do? She created an opportunity for a blessing. And over time, Elisha said, what does this woman need? They don't have a baby in this house. And then, bam, a baby came. Lift your hand before the Lord as you open your eyes. May you see opportunity. May God give you insight and revelation. There are things you can do on your job that can create opportunity except you don't see it. You don't know how to do it. That is, we can create it ourselves. Number three, opportunity we miss. Let me talk about one more. Opportunity we miss very often to raise a child properly. The Bible says, train a child in the way it should go. For when it's old, it will not depart. Best time to train a child is before teenage years. If your child has gone to teenage years, friend, uh, you have a lot of work to do. You have more more work to do than when he's five years old. There's a best time to invest in our children. There's a best time to correct their character. There's a best time to knock off some bad habit in their life. But many of us as parents, we are too busy and the opportunity walked away. You saw your child became a grown man and left the house and forever you missed the opportunity to change his character. Are you hearing me, people of God? All parents here under the sound of my voice, you will not regret over your children. You will not miss something in their lives. When you look around today, men who are rapists, men who are murderers, who are dangerous today, they were once kids. They were once innocent teenagers. Their parents missed certain things in their lives. 
Sometimes God sent them to the, to the children's kid room in the church and we miss them. The story was told of a man called Sehan Sehan, the man who shot uh, uh, Robert Kennedy. I don't know if you heard that in East to Senator Kennedy. Kennedy was the younger brother of JFK. If you know that, he was the attorney general under JFK when KJFK was assassinated. This younger one, the younger Kennedy, he was, he was a senator and he was trying to, to, to campaign to become a president. And right there, he was shot down, cut down by the gun of a young man, very young man, when he killed him. And then I read the account of, of his life. And this is what a pastor said. We missed him. Our chance to change things came and it passed. We did not know it was there. A dark-skinned little boy sat through Sunday school classes for three years at a great Baptist church in San Antonio, but we missed him. His name was Sehan Sehan. At age 24, he shot and killed Senator Robert Kennedy. And we look back and we see how did we miss him? He was probably looking for an answer. He was confused. His dreams were broken. He needed somebody to straighten him. I pray we will not miss this in our children. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Opportunity for major blessings. Somebody to marry. Some job waiting for you. Opportunity to invest. Because we did not have eyes, we missed them opportunity to get great things in life but we miss them because we didn't know i shared a story this morning about a pastor far back in africa one day he came to this meeting of pastors and uh, he was so, so excited that day. this man of god had been known to do some unusual things like that see it was his birthday and so many people had blessed him at that particular time with so many cars and he didn't know what to do with it. So he came to this pastor's meeting. And he said, anyone here today believe in God that they can have a vehicle, a car? And everybody raised their hand, you know? How many people believe in God for something new? Everybody raised their hand. I said, all right, thank God for you. How many people believe God can do this for them this morning inside this service? You can have a car right now. <laughs> and people dropped their hand. Saying, How is that possible? But few people, and I'm seeing few people this morning who have their hand up. Few people <laughs> say, yes, pastor, I can have it right now. I believe God. It is possible right now. Every pastor says, what are you talking about? Then say, those of you who raise up your hands, stand up. Only a few set of people, they came out. They thought they wanted to pray for them. He said, no, prayer time is over. He brought a box one by one. He gave all of them a car key brand new. The others were wrong. They don't know. Say where you are. Stay where you are. Opportunity expire. May it not expire over your life. If you don't see it, you cannot take advantage of it. Many times people have wasted years. They look at the time they could have worked so hard. The things they could have gotten in their life. They wasted time in party. They wasted time gyrating around. And all that years of hard labor and struggle. And they are regretting. The Bible says there is a season and a time for everything on earth. Let's close this meeting this morning by telling you one of the major factors in making opportunity happen. It is called time. It is called time. Time. May you not miss time. Time is a powerful factor. God's open doors are often time sensitive. If you don't recognize that time, it expires and you miss it. Here we Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. What the Bible says there. It says to everything, everything, there is a season. Are you seeing that? There is a season and to and a time to every purpose. In other words, God has a time lock on some things in our lives. For you, you will not miss it. Opportunity can expire, but it will not expire in your tongue. In Jesus' name. God wanted to reach the world and he raised his disciples and God fixed his eyes on Peter. One day he raised Peter up and said, Peter, he lowered a sheet in Revelation. He said, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter saw all kind of stuff, things he doesn't want to touch as a Jew. And he said, Lord, no, sir, I cannot do it. 
The first time, the second time, and the third time, the Lord said, Peter, rise, kill, and eat this thing. It is your Lord giving you instruction. Is that no, not so, Lord? <laughs> if it's Lord, it should be, yes, sir. Is that not so, Lord? And then God to remove it. Do you know what happened that day for Peter? He lost an opportunity to become an apostle to the Gentiles. God then began to look for alternative. May God not switch you for other people. See, God, God's plan will not fail. It is the people he will switch. May he not abandon us. It's an opportunity to serve. We need helpers in the house of God. Some of us can do something, but you are not doing anything. God may switch and find somebody else. He found another young man, a man who was a persecutor called Saul. Saul was an enemy of the kingdom. God can use anybody at any time whoever he wanted. He raised Saul up. Say, Saul, you will do the job. Since Apostle Peter refused the job, I will use you too. And when it was his turn, Saul said, Lord, what will you have me do? And you remember the rest of the story. God began to pour grace on him. He wrote one thought of the New Testament because of the grace of God. May you not miss opportunity. See, Peter perhaps saw it later. Say, wow, wow, I missed it. See, time and opportunity, they are interconnected. There is a season when you must take something. There's a moment when you must rise and shine. There's a time when you must act. There's a time when you must apply. If you dilly-dally, you procrastinate, you delay, it expires. Finally, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. It says, I returned, I saw, I saw under the sun, Ecclesiastes 9, 11, that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. When I look at this, I say, God, what are you saying here? He's saying to me that there are certain things in your life. You will get it. It's not going to be dependent on your ability. It's not going to be dependent on who you know. Are you hearing me, church? You're going to get something in your life. It's not going to be dependent on your connection. It's not going to be based on your experience. He says, what, how is it going to happen? I am going to engineer near it. I will give you time and I will give you chance. I will give you opportunity. See what they call time is a factor in opportunity. What they call chance is the opportunity. It's a time and chance happen to them all. In other words, God will give to everyone this measured opportunity but you will, you will not miss it. I say you will not miss it. All of the things that need all your energy, your struggle, your because they come on, I can help you. Rise on your feet, people of God. Let's pray together. Anybody ready? Say, Lord, open my eyes. Give me insight and understanding. Give me, oh God, I will not miss my season and my time. That was what Jesus tell to a people in Luke chapter 19 as we're going to pray. He says in Luke chapter 19 verse 42, he says, ah, you people. The Bible says in verse 41, Jesus cried over the city. Luke 19 41, and he wept over it. He's saying, if thou hast known, even thou, at least this day, the things which belong unto your peace, but now they are hid. Where? They are hid from your eyes. You cannot see them. Ah, I pray this morning you will see them. I said this morning you will catch them. See, opportunity and time. You may act too soon. You may respond too late. Or you may not even recognize it at all. You see, he said it in verse number 44. Give me verse 44. He says, and a time shall come when all of this shall lay thee even with your grand and your children within thee. And they shall not live in thee one stone upon another. Why? Because thou knowest not the time of your visitation. You missed your moment. Let your hand, people of God, and say, Father, I will not miss my moment. Lord, I will not miss my appointed time. There's an appointed time for favor. There's an appointed time for open door. Come on, agree with me this morning. Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Open my heart. Open my understanding. 
three essential. Put it on the screen. You need the spirit of wisdom. You need the spirit of discernment. You need a spiritual debt. Lay your hand on your head and say, Father, give me wisdom. Give me discernment. Lord, give me spiritual depth to be able to read the signs of the times. To be able to understand my season, my moment. I shall not miss it. My children shall not miss it. Father, thank you. Lord, thank you. We seize hold of opportunity this morning. We walk inside of it. We grab it by the horn. We, uh, we extol it. We take it by force. We enjoy it. Father, thank you. We bless you, Lord, for hearing us. We exhort you for doors and windows that are opening for your people. Things that are hard this morning will become easy because you'll be there at the right time, at the right moment, with the right people. In the name of Jesus. Those of you online, if you are not born again, please say this word after me. Jesus, come to my heart. I take you now as my Lord and Savior. This season of my opportunity, I will not miss it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are blessed this morning, shout amen. And put your hand together and say, Lord, I receive the opportunity that I meant for my life. I will not miss my season. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Are you blessed today? Your eyes will see it. Your hand will touch it. Grace will flow. In Jesus' name.